When you think, you think in pictures. Check it out. I'm going to suggest that you think of the home you live in, and as you do, realize that an image of your home comes on to the screen of your mind. It's almost as if there's a screen running right through the center of our head, and the second we think of our home, the picture of the home comes on to the screen of our mind. Now I want to suggest that you think of your automobile. And the second you think of your automobile, the picture of the home is gone, and the picture of the automobile is there. Think of your kitchen, your backyard. Think of where you work or go to school. And bang, 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 just like that, the picture changes. We literally think in pictures. Now I'm going to suggest that you think of your mind. Now when most people think of their mind, they get an image of the brain. How many thought of the brain? Quite a few hands going up. And yet, you know, the brain is not the mind any more than the fingernail is. And paradoxically, the fingernail and the brain is the mind. You see, mind is an activity and body is the manifestation of that activity. And we're going to find out as we go along through the morning and this afternoon that the body is really nothing but an instrument of the mind. Now, your brain is comprised of hundreds of thousands of cells. Into these cells, we impregnate pictures or images. And as we think, we activate that particular group of brain cells, and the picture that's in them flashes on the screen of the mind. Now, I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Flip over onto page five in your exercise book. At the top of the page, it's talking about me and money. Now, when you think of yourself and you think of money, what kind of a picture do you get? Do you know the vast majority of people get a picture of, po of poverty? And what we want to do is take and build cells of recognition in your brain for prosperity. So we're talking about me and money. That's you and your money. Now we say the program was written in the sincere hope that it would lead you. And that's all we could do is lead you. It's like Dr. Billy B. Sharp in Chicago. He said, a person will not believe something until they discover it for themselves. So we just actually want to lead you to this new awareness. Well, we want to lead you to the many discoveries that lie within you. And we're going to do that through the repetition of prosperous ideas. What we're going to do is tell you one thing 10,000 times and 10,000 different ways. And we're going to cause pictures to fly on the screen of your mind until you get a clear picture of greatness and prosperity locked up within you, because that's what they're, regardless of whether you understand that or not at this point. Now, we're suggesting that you start to see money. Whenever you think of money, see this stuff as an obedient, diligent servant. You're the master, it's the servant. And don't ever get that equation reversed, or you're going to find yourself in very, very deep trouble. You can use this to provide service far beyond your own physical presence. If you and I had no money, we'd still be able to provide service, but the service that we provided would be confined to our physical presence at any given place or any given time. However, if we had some money, we could provide that service far beyond our own physical presence. So let's make certain that we get that programmed into those cells properly. Now you come down a little further, we're going to say here that lack and limitation can only exist when we make room for them in our mind. But prosperity consciousness knows no lack and it knows no limitation. Now, I want to suggest that you resolve to just completely take the lid off your marvelous mind. Just blow it away. And let the greatness start to flow around in there. Now, flip over to the next page. When we start thinking about money, and we start thinking about ourselves, as I suggested, we get images on the screen of our mind. Now, on page six, we say throughout your entire Born Rich seminar, your attention is directed at the importance of your mind. The type of thoughts and ideas which occupy your consciousness are of paramount importance in developing prosperity in your life. Your mind is either in an orderly or a confused state. Order must prevail. John mentioned that a little, or, a little earlier. Order and movement are what necessary. Well, we start with the order. 
So we say order must prevail in your mind if you ever hope to see it manifest in your material world. Now, you want order in your material world, that means meaningful relationships. That means prosperity and growth in our business. It could mean all kinds of things that are good, but they all have to start in here. Everything starts in our mind. Well, if we're going to have order in our mind, we must have an image of our mind, and most people don't have. So what we're going to do as we go through the seminar is build brain cells. Now that may sound a little strange to some of you. You may be sitting there and thinking, well, this is ridiculous. How can I build brain cells sitting watching this box? Well, I can assure you that you can, and I'm going to convince you very shortly that you're able to. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use different examples as we go through this seminar. And each one of these examples are real, live examples, every one of them. This is a letter that I received on February the 18th, 1986. It came from Joanne White. She was the regional administrator to the vice president of sales for the Metropolitan Insurance Company in Kansas City. Now, Joanne was in a seminar there in January of 1986. This letter is dated February of 86. And when Joanne came to the seminar in 1986, she told me a fascinating story. Now, apparently, she had come to a seminar that I conducted in Kansas City 10 years prior to this in 1976. Now, I didn't remember Joanne, nor did I remember her son, who she was telling me the story of. But when she told me what happened, I quickly related to it because it's happened many times and there's many situations that I do remember. Apparently, we had been doing seminars right across the country for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, and a friend of hers in another area had been talking to her on the phone, who also worked for the same company, and this friend told her, if this seminar ever comes to Kansas City, make sure you go and take your son. Well, she took that person's advice and she came. She brought her 11-year-old son, Eric, who had been diagnosed as having learning disabilities. Now, keep your mind open here, folks, because this is real. It could happen, and it can happen to anyone. Someone had made a classical error, and someone, possibly in a position of authority, in fact, probably in a position of authority, and they told this lady and her husband that their 11-year-old son had learning disabilities and not to expect too much from him. So they didn't. Worse still, the little boy didn't expect much from himself. I told her to bring the little boy to the seminar, and we just built new brain cells, that that child could do anything he wanted. But this idea of learning disabilities was an error that someone had made, and they shouldn't believe it any longer. And I said, you bring him, have him sit right near the front, and I said, we'll give him a little special attention, and you'll just watch the change take place. Let me read you the letter. She's dear Bob. I wanted to take a moment to tell you how much I had gained from your seminar in Kansas City and how much I am continuing to gain from the use of your tapes. Now, at that time, all we had is audio tapes. Now, you can sit and you can watch this over and over and over again because there's going to be parts of it that will seem a little confusing to you first time through. But as you play it over and over and over again, the confusion will leave and order is going to come to your mind. There's many times I'll take a book and I'll read the same paragraph over and over again. This book that I mentioned earlier of Napoleon Hills, I've been reading that for 27 years. Now, it's not such that I'm such a slow learner. It's just there's so much depth in the book. My wife's sitting back there and she's saying, no, it's not the depth, it's that you're a slow learner. <laughs> but, uh, and anyway, that, that's just her opinion. All right. Now, she said, I listen to the tapes each time I get in my car, and I intend to continue to do so. And, of course, you've got the audio cassettes from the seminar as well, so you can just snap them into your car. Remember this. If you only drive 25,000 miles a year, you're spending 13, 40-hour weeks behind the wheel of that automobile, all of which your conscious mind is free to travel around and do anything it wants to do. Your body is programmed to drive the car. Well, she's Bob, I'm sure at times you ponder over the long-range effects of these seminars. Do you merely get people excited and then once you leave town, forget it? Well, she's, I attended your seminar when you were in Kansas City 10 years ago. I brought my 11-year-old son who was going through some trying times in school. 
he had been diagnosed as having learning disabilities and he was really struggling. Listen to this. He was certain he was a reject. What a terrible thought to be running through the little kid's mind. I'm a reject. Many adults running around with that thought in their mind. You could have been sitting with that thought in your mind. You might be sitting with that thought in your mind. I'm a reject. There's no such thing as rejects. God didn't make any rejects. But she says, I brought Eric to the seminars. He learned that you can do anything or be anything that you believe you can. He learned to set goals and to achieve the goals that he set. Listen to this for progress. I am very proud to tell you there was both an immediate and a long-range change in Eric's performance. In that same school year, his grades spiraled upward and he became an honor student. Eric attended Bay State. He is an Eagle Scout. He was listed in Who's Who in American high schools. He was editor of his school paper. He qualified for scholarships, that's plural, he had his choice, for college. And at the present time, he's a junior at the University of Missouri and he's on the dean's list. I feel a great deal of this can be credited to the fact that this 11-year-old boy learned he could do anything he believed he could and he became a goal setter. Joanne concluded by saying, Bob, I just wanted to share this letter with you as I really do not know if we would be able to tell this success story if I had not brought Eric to this seminar. I'll always be grateful. I guess she will. And I guess Eric will too. And what was the big win? Was it the who's who in American high schools? Was it being editor of his school paper? Was it the honors that he accomplished that first year? Was it the college scholarships in college? I don't think so. I don't think any of those things were the big win. You know what the big win was? It was the one single idea that enabled him to do all these things. And one idea can cause you to make the progress this young boy made. We have a gentleman in our audience, I'm not quite sure where he is. He's a good friend of mine, Grant Sylvester. He's the president of Money Concepts for Canada. And uh, Grant Sylvester hired us to conduct these seminars way back in the 70s for a large company that he was a senior executive in. And right across the country, they had a 53% increase in sales. Now that's hundreds of people. That's an enormous increase. I want you to think about that for a moment. Here's an idea that gave this little boy honors in schools, gave Grant's company a 50% increase in sales. So you see, I don't really care what you do. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's you that counts. And the more you understand you, the better your results you're going to get. Now, I'm going to run through a very quick idea, and it's very simple. Don't let the simplicity of this idea deceive you. What we're going to do is run through a concept and explain just how brain cells are built. Now, I'm going to ask someone from the audience, uh, Nino, you're a good friend. Come up to the front here for a moment. All right, Nino. Wonderful, Bob. Give Nino a hand. Uh, and if you're sitting in your office or sitting at home, I want you to meet one of the best managers I know. Thank you. And I mean that sincerely, and I'm not just saying that to flatter Nino. I'm saying that because of the results that I see as people get. Uh, Nino was uh, kind enough to hire my son and daughter-in-law to go to work for them at the beginning of this year, and every month this year, they have earned somewhere between twenty and forty-five thousand dollars a month. Now you don't do that if you haven't got a real good manager drawing the best out of you. Management is the development of people, it's not the direction of things. So Nino's a very good friend of mine. Now Nino, I want to ask you a couple of questions. I'm going to do something. What I'd like you to do is hold out your hand like this. All right? Now I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Now I would like you to look at that. I want you to see what that is. I don't want anybody to say anything. I'm going to put it in Nino's hand. You just close your eyes, Nino. I'm going to put this in your hand, and I want you to feel it. Close your hand and feel it. Now, Nino, tell me what that is. It feels like a piece of metal. Well, move your fingers around it and tell me what kind of a metal. What would you use that for? I would imagine to open the door. To open the door. <laughs> what do you call a piece of metal that opens the door? <laughs> A key. This guy's a real ham, and he put him in front of a camera, and I'm telling you, he'll take it away. You guessed it right, Nino. 
you win one of our cassette tapes. That <laughs> is a key. All right? Now, what happened there? Let's stop and think what happened. Nino has sensory factors. He can hear, see, smell, taste, and touch. And when your sensory factor touch comes in contact with something, a light message is sent through a nerve passageway in your body. It strikes a group of cells in your brain. Those brain cells are activated, and the picture that's in the cells flash on the screen of the mind. So although Nino was not looking at this, which is a sensory factor, and it'll work that way too, he was touching the key, and that triggered the image on the screen of his mind. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to show something to Nino, and I'm going to ask him what it is. Nino, I would like you to tell me what that is. A pin. A what? A pin. A pin. You think it is? Yes. You don't know what it is, do you? You're guessing now, aren't you? Okay. Now, you weren't guessing when you told me what that is. No. But when, you, when I asked you what this little metal object was, you are guessing. Is that correct? Correct. Now, Nino, what you're really saying is, I had cells of recognition when I touched this, but when I look at this, I have no cells of recognition. Now, we're going to build cells of recognition in your brain. I'm going to tell you what this is, and I'm going to do something with it, and as I do that, instantly, in a millisecond, cells will be built in your brain. That, Nino, has a little plunger on it. Now, as I hit that plunger, something's going to come out of here. Do you see that? That is a toothpick, Nino. <laughs> That's what your Aunt Marg gives you when you don't need anything, all right? <laughs> now, all right, now that is a toothpick. Now, that's no big deal, and you could miss the whole message here. But you see, Nino didn't know what that is. Do you know what he was saying? I don't have any cells of recognition in my brain. Now, when you go home, Nino, you can tell Rose that you built some brain cells this morning. She can <laughs> love more of you, all right? You take more of her home. But that's exactly what that is, all right? and we just built some brain cells. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nina. <laughs> Nino Spazzeri is, without question, one of the greatest real estate sales managers I've ever met. And you know, I told Brian something, and I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you go to do something, make certain that the people you surround yourself with are very successful. Carl Menninger one point in time pointed out that environment is more important than heredity. In other words, the people you find yourself surrounded by are more important to your success, your well-being, than what's built right into your genes at birth. And I suggested Brian go and see Nino. I told Leslie, go see Nino. Go to work for the man and listen to him and do what he tells you. And he'll draw the best out of you. And that's exactly what he's doing. Now, we're going to build some brain cells with respect to the mind, all right? And as we build these brain cells with respect to the mind, we're going to build a picture of our mind right in here. And then as we get that picture in here, we can start making headway and making some... We can start making headway and making some of the adjustments that John talked about in the proper use of the...